All right, it's Chris Petri here. Welcome everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by again with our watercolor paintings. And this is an extreme beginner series. We're doing some beautiful flower paintings. These are clay pots with some flowers, some beautiful green leaf forms. We're going to use our iPhone, our cell phone to work from. We're going to have our cell phone right up in the screen over here on the right hand side as we work here. So you'll have your onboard um, reference material on this video the whole time so you won't have to guess on what I'm doing. And um, hope you'll enjoy this. This is a lot of fun. Again, we mix beautiful colors. We harmonize all our colors together throughout this painting. We have some beautiful shadowing under these clay pots that we tie right in. We mix all the colors harmoniously throughout the whole painting. You'll see how we do it. I cover all the color mixtures. So I have my palette, my Prang Oval 16 Beginners Palette, Extreme Beginners Palette. You, you'll see that I cover all the colors, how to mix everything first in your palette to start with. And then you go in and paint and you'll be so much better off. You'll have everything mixed, no stress. So we cover all these things here on this video and uh, we'll see you in just a second. We'll begin our pencil drawing first and then we'll get into the painting. All right, we'll see you in just a second. All right, we just saw the finished painting, everybody. Glad you're coming by and um, working with us here. We're having a great time. We're gonna actually do a beautiful flower painting. We're gonna have flower pots with flowers, leaf forms, clay uh, clay pots so what I'll do is I'll put the picture up on the uh, screen here so I'm hoping you can see that I'll put it up in the upper right hand corner here I found some real estate here that I can afford to put that picture up there so you can notice it's uh, actually three clay pot pots here and you know vases and flowers some large leaf forms and I think this is perfect for the extreme beginner series here we're just going to go through this real quick we're just going to cover the basically three kind of techniques or methods we'll use for this is the first thing we'll do is a preliminary sketch which means we're going to just do a preliminary layout with really super light pencil lines to get in our three vases make sure we fit it into our area that we're going to be working in Second will be our contour drawing, which means we're going to go over with a darker line over everything, the drawing, to get our really solid drawing. And third, we'll do the painting. And we'll do this a la prima, so this won't be a glazing technique, this will be the a la prima method. And I always talk about using, using usually two methods, usually the a la prima or the glazing method. Those are the two methods I use most often. Most watercolor artists use those two methods. I would say the most popular is probably a lot of people use the glazing in watercolor, the glazing technique, which is light washes first and then your darker washes over top. I sort of use a combination of the two and I think it's good if you can learn both of them separately. And then when you go in and do your paintings, you'll find that you'll have an easier time because sometimes you're gonna use both the glazing and the a la prima method at the same time. But that's getting into a little bit of theory here, getting maybe ahead of ourselves a little bit. Let's not worry about that. The thing is we're extreme beginners here you're just starting out you want to do some really beautiful flower pots and flowers here simple um, painting here let's not make it as complex as maybe this might seem that looks pretty complex you know there's a lot of super accurate details in this let's not do that let's keep it a little more simple so you'll see how I'm gonna simplify this and not get into too much critical detail like we have in this make it more of a more simple looking painting as we're going so the first thing we do is let's get our um, rectangle. So we're gonna. This is we're gonna be working in this area here. So I'm just gonna go up like that, and we'll go across here. We have plenty of room here. Let's go like this. Then I'll just lift up my phone for a second. Finish this up here like that. Put that back there, and then we'll continue on. So the next thing I want to do is. We're going to try to fill up our picture space here, our rectangle, our, our area we're working in for our painting. We're going to try to fill up that space with these three vases. So the first thing we do is let's do it sensibly. Let's make sure we kind of do a light pencil sketch for a super light just to get everything where we, where we want it. Let's see. 
let's start out here. Now I can see here these three vases are kind of hugging the right side over here a little bit. Just making an observation there. So we don't have to really use that as maybe that's just something I took the picture and maybe it was off center. But <clears throat> in any case, we can see these two are sort of uh, uh, kind of buddied up together, these two vases and these two flower arrangements here in these uh, clay pots. And this one here is a little bit on its own. So let's kind of make that first observation and say, okay, these two are kind of like clustered together and this, this vase here is a little bit over on its own. Kind of looks interesting. Instead of making them equal, equally spaced, the artist that did this original painting said, let's take these two and kind of snug them together and let's leave this one over here to the right. So let's do that. Let's kind of just lightly pencil sketch what we want to do here. So I have the first vase here. And again, trust me, I'm just doing a super light sketch. You probably can't even see it. I don't think you can, but I have to do it first anyway, and you should do it too as you're working. And then the second clay pot's over here, like this. And then the third one is a little bit over here on its own, sort of like that, like this. And then the leaf forms, I'm just going to create basic kind of where the leaf forms are here. I like the way this artist did this painting originally. Lots of variation, nothing symmetrical. Everything seems to be really nicely planned out where there's no real symmetrical kind of look to it. It's really kind of nice. Everything's looking like it's different, unique. Um, and again, I'm going to go over this with a dark um, pencil drawing, but I just want to get my first bit of drawing in so that you can kind of see how I do this. So the first thing I'm doing, again, casual, nice light. I'm going to move this up just a second like that. Light, casual, light pencil sketch just to get things where we want to see it in this picture space here. Okay, so I've got the, I've got all the clay pots in at the bottom with a super light sketch. Then I have the um, large leaf forms, which you can see all through here, the bottom of the um, flower arrangements. There's large leaf forms. This looks very natural looking. So I got all those large leaf forms in. And now the last thing I'm going to do is the uh, flowers. So I'm going to keep this up here like so. I'll start over here on this side. This, this one kind of comes up here, and there's a cluster of one, two, one, two, three, one, two. So I'm looking at the pattern and saying, okay, there's a there's one there, there's another flower here, there's a third flower up here, then there's two over here, one, two, then there's another one here, one and two. So that's that. Then this one here is um a little different. This one is one here, one up here, one up here, one over here, and then another one over here, kind of on the side profile. The flower's on a profile there. So we have the two, two clay pots, all the, you know, three clay pots, all three with the large leaf forms. Now I'm doing the flowers. Then I'm going to do the third flower arrangement here inside these clay pots. And this one here is flower here, flower here. They're a little different. Flower here. Some of them are different looking. They have different orientation. Uh, the um, flowers are angled at different profiles. Some of the flowers are profiles. Some are looking forward, kind of like frontal view flower shapes. So I think we have it. There we go. Perfect. Now what I'll do is I'll take a quick break and we'll come back and I'll draw it with darker pencil line because I don't think you can really see this too much. If I turn down the lights here a second, 
you might be able to see it a little bit. That's the problem with when we make videos. Um, you have to have the light really bright. So I have to have the lights on bright enough to see the palette, the colors in the palette, and eventually our painting. But sometimes those light pencil sketches, you can't really see them. That's why I'm going to go over this with a darker pencil line. So you just have to remember, it's really simple. You have to remember, you want to have that light pencil line, super light, barely visible pencil line when you first start your drawings, because that's the time when you can take an eraser and erase a few things here and there, and it's not going to really be a problem. It won't be difficult to erase and redraw a few lines if you have to, or to readjust things. Maybe you have to move something over a little bit here or there. You can do that real easy. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's real easy to do it if you're just doing a super light pencil line. You can do a little erasing, move things around a little bit if you have to, you know, because sometimes you get things down on your paper and you go, oh, I put this flower pot too far over to the right. It's, it's kind of hanging off the paper. I got to get it back in this way a little bit. Well, that's easy. You just erase it with an eraser, super light pencil line for your first preliminary sketch. Then... Once you're done with your light preliminary sketch and everything's just the way you like it, or so close, you know, then you go over with a darker pencil line if you want to. That's the thing. You Some people, I many artists email me and they text and they send messages in the comments section of YouTube here and they say, Chris, is it okay if I just leave the light pencil lines and paint on top of that? And I always say, yes, definitely. If you like to see pencil lines, in your paintings, well then you're going to go over like I am and do a darker pencil line over the top of your preliminary sketch. But I hope that's clear that you can do either or. You can do a darker pencil line over your really light pencil sketch once you're done, or you can just leave your light pencil sketch as is and start painting straight away right after that. So that's up to you. You're the artist. You, Everyone's different. Some of you out there, I know you would really enjoy doing the just light pencil sketch and not have darker pencil lines on your paper. That's fine. Do it that way. Uh, if you want to have darker pencil lines so that you can maybe see some of the pencil lines in your painting, fantastic. Do it that way too. That's the way I like to do it. So either way is fine. Um, thing is, you're the artist. You want to decide how you like your paintings to look and what looks most pleasing to you. And, um, you know, that's all it is really, you know, as far as it's your own decision as far as what you want your painting to look like. So let's take a quick break. I'll come back and then I'll do my darker contour drawing over the top of this light pencil sketch. Okay, so I'll be right back. Away, oh, hey, we're back and we're going to do our contour drawing. Let's get our photograph back up here again. And we're using very high tech high tech uh, production here. <laughs> so we have our iPhone picture up there on the right hand side. I know all of you like this. I heard for many years over and over, Chris, can you please put the subject matter in the painting? Most times I can actually do that if you, incidentally, or I mean, uh, rarely I can do that, I should say, because many times I work from like other people's artwork or other people's photographs and things because I run out of ideas so I'm always look, scouring around trying to find ideas on what to paint next and um, you know so um, you know invariably I always you know wind up looking at my art books I have at least a hun 150 or 200 uh, art you know watercolor art books like from different authors I have all of Charles Reed's books I have many other I have Alvaro Castanet's books. I have um, Mel Stabin's books. I have all of, um, I think I have all of Edward Wesson's books. I have, I have so many books. I have, I have tons of books. I have uh, Stephen Cronin's books. I mean, I have like tons of great art, watercolor art uh, books. So, and my book is coming out soon too. I must say, uh, my book. You'll be looking out for it very soon. I hopefully it's by the end of the year. But right around the end of this year, turn of the next year, 2023, um, my new book will be out. So you'll be excited to see that. It's going to be really awesome. It's already probably 90% complete. It's just going through the final editing and uh, design uh, phase, and it'll be done soon. So I'm excited about that. 
In any case, let's get back to work here. Contour drawing. Let's get this contour drawing here completed. So I'll just start at the bottom here. And I'm going to do the darker pencil line so you can see how I'm going to actually create this. So I'm just going to do this here. Like that. And then there's a... Uh, so these are clay pots. This one happens to have a... Uh, kind of like that drip uh, tray in there. Like this. And then maybe... I can erase a line. Looks like this should be down set in here more like so. Like that. Like, like that. And um, let's see over here. Let's we got this clay pot over here. But let me keep st stick over here. And again, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna get too uh, I'm not gonna actually let's put it this way. You can see all the very, very um, I'm pretty sure you can see this from the from the video. You can see in this photograph on my iPhone. There's a lot of really um, intricate details on these flower pots and the and the uh, flowers. I we're, this is you know an extreme beginner's video, so I'm not going to get into every detail and all these fine details. Let's just get a basic um, concept of this, a basic idea of this. So I'm just going to do that instead of, so I'm just going to, maybe I'll make some of these shapes, the flower shapes around here, like so. So these flowers have like kind of scalloped looking um, leaf, leaf, leaves and, and petals. And there's, I'm going to put a little tiny small center of each flower like that. And continue on here. And again, I'm not gonna. Again, I'm not gonna do all these details. I, we're doing a fun. Let's have fun with this. Just get the basic idea of it. Like this. There we go. Perfect. That's one done. Then over here, they overlap. So we have this one here. Leaf forms here. And again, I'm not doing it like in super detail or trying to get everything super accurate. Let me just kind of get the idea of it. Okay, now we have the flower, uh, the uh, petals of the flower around here. And this one's up here a little bit like this. And this one's kind of frontal facing. They all have centers in them. This one's a little bit in profile. That flower there. And I put a couple stems in there of the flowers, right? That looks pretty good, I think. Um, one, two, I, I'm missing a, um, a larger leaf form here, so let me just put that in like so. Let's shift this over here. We'll do this last one here. And I see that this flower pot is quite a bit larger, so let me capture that. I just want to make it look a little bit larger. And I'm not going to get into all the details again. I'm just trying to... Let's have fun with this. Don't worry about it. We're going to have fun with the colors, the watercolor paints. Um, you know, don't, don't fret and don't regret. Have a great time with your watercolor paintings. No stress. You can paint these as loose and as fun as you want to. Or if you want to take your time and do more detail, then you fine, do that. You're the artist. You you create the painting the way you want it to. I'm just showing you how, how I'm doing it. I'm trying to do it more loosely, more fun. Um, but some of you might want to do a lot of detail, and you're saying to yourself back home, you're saying, oh, my God, Chris, you're, you're leaving out all those interesting details. I, I want to do the details. Well, absolutely. Do those details as you want them to be. And um, maybe I'm trying to go fast because I'm tired. I have a cold. Maybe I just want to get done with the video quick. And so, but you do what you want. Okay, so. And I'll just do the, some of the clay pot details, just a few. Like that. 
good enough. Look at that. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. There we go. Okay. So that's it. Oh, maybe there's another leaf form over here I saw. Like that. Okay. All right. So we're going to start painting next. I'm going to take a break. Again, one more break, please. Is it okay if I take a break? I hope you don't mind. I'm going to leave the photograph up here in the right corner. And we'll start doing this first, this vase and flowers first. And we'll work our way over this way. And I tend to like a background, so I will put a background, like a table or something, across. You can always take a ruler and go across your painting to get a background, like a back of a table. These paint, I, you know, that's the only thing I would say I, I kind of have an issue with with this artist that did this. They kind of left these pots and plants and flowers kind of floating off in space here. I don't see any like back of a table or I don't see any shadows tying them down to the to the bottom of the painting so I mean it's a gorgeous painting whoever painted this but I do like to have a background in there it kind of makes it feel like the flowers and the pots are sitting on a table versus just kind of floating in in space but you might like yours more feeling like they're floating that's a cool concept too so this artist probably purposely created this painting not having any table or anything that makes it feel tied down they wanted to maybe have a feeling of things floating kind of like levitating so again you're the artist you consider these things as you go when you're painting when you're creating your compositions and this is the extreme beginner series so you're learning some high level interesting details right here and tidbits that we're, sh we're sharing just so that you know them and you have them in your toolbox and you can jot down some notes if you want if you don't want to make any notes maybe you you know you have a great memory probably most of you have great memories so you're not going to forget these things I'm talking about but some of you might need to jot them down I need to jot down notes my memory is not the greatest so um, okay so let's let me take a break if you don't mind and I'll come right back All right, so we're getting started again here. We're doing the painting portion now. Again, we're doing the alla prima method of painting, which means we're just gonna start any old place you like. And you just start in one place and you just work around the painting anywhere you like to. Usually it's best if you start in one area and then work your way from, let's say, left to right if you're right-handed. So I often mention this, especially this is an Extreme beginner series video. Um, so I like to mention things that are real fundamental, things that are kind of basic to uh, watercolor painting. So if you're right-handed, your best bet usually if you're right-handed is to start on the left side of your painting and work to the right, like so. And the reason we say that is because if you start over here on the right side painting, it's a possibility that you'll wind up leaning into your painting over here on the right as you're painting this way to the left so if you paint over here on the left and you just kind of work your way this way you're you're just going to tend to work this way and you won't lean into your wet paint so that's all that really is is if you're left-handed and you're painting if you're left-handed you'd want to paint over here to the left and you'd have your maybe your reference material would be over here or whatever but in any, in, you know, in this case, if you're left-handed, you'd start on your left side of your painting and work this way. And you just keep working this way as you're going into your paints and your water, like so. And you work left, right to left. If you're right-handed, you'd work left to right. Basically a simple rule. Again, you're the artist. You don't have to always work by these things that I say. You might consider them and that's all. But it is a good rule of thumb to, if you're right-handed, you start left, go right. If you're left-handed, you start on the right side of your painting and you work to the left. Okay, so I'm going to mix my colors now. I'm looking here and I'm saying, oh, wow, this is a beautiful color variation here. Greens, reds, um, purples, browns, red flowers, some blue flowers. Let's kind of mix up first what we need in the palette and then we work from there 
that's a great plan if you can mix up your colors first over here in your palette get a lot of colors out there first have them quite a bit mixed try to try to always aim for mixing all the colors you're going to need for your painting over here on the left in your palette and then you're good to go you can just continue painting all the way through once in a while you might run short you just mix a few little bits extra that you need but if you can kind of get the quantity and the amount that you need first here in your palette mixed up then you're kind of just painting the whole time and having a good time painting and not worried so much about oh what color was that I have to mix again or uh, I'm not sure what color that was I should mix more of or whatever like you know things like that so let's start from the bottom and work our way up so the bottom here is like the red clay colors so let's go with down here orange mixed with brown so I'm going to mix orange, brown, red, touch of blue in there too, just to kind of mellow those colors out a little bit. So you can kind of see I have a clay type of color there. And then you can mix up over here some purple and blue. So that might be your like shadowy colors. So let's do that. Then you can add some orange in there too, just to mellow that out a little bit, some brown. just to make that a little bit mellower, but that still is a good, nice purple there. So we have the kind of that clay color, orangey brown for the clay pots, some shadowy color with the purples and a little bit of brown mixed in to mellow that out a little bit. Then let's get into the greens where the leaf forms are. So we're gonna do lots of greens here. Greens, let's do tons of greens. We have the light green here, which is kind of like a leaf green, or sort of like an, um, yeah, that's kind of like a leaf green, really. This is like a viridian green here almost. This is like a viridian green down here. So you have your viridian green over here. Then you have a sap green up here. And then you have your leaf, leaf green over here. So you have these three greens mixed up. Perfect. A little bit of brown in there just to calm that down a little bit sometimes those high intensity colors need to be mellowed out a little bit so you add a little brown to those like so maybe we're going to add a little bit of yellow over here some of this color just to make some kind of lemony kind of like olivey yellow there i see some of that in there and then the flowers those are kind of like some blues and reds so those are going to be some reds there. This is going to be like our alizarin crimson or rose matter. There's a little bit of red here. This is like your cadmium red. If you work with my normal everyday palette all the time. And then you, we have some blue, French ultramarine blue over here. So these will be our flower colors. So we have our flower colors up here at the very top, which is the very top up here. Notice I'm mixing the same colors as they go up through the picture. So down here is the flower pot colors at the very bottom. The shadowy colors in there too for the flower pots. Then we get up into the leaf forms here in the middle. Leaf forms, here we go. Greens, mixing up those greens like we just did. And then um, at the very top, the flowers, the reds and the blue. So I kind of just logically built it up from the bottom up. So it makes sense, right? Bottom is the clay pots. Let's mix our colors for the clay pots at the bottom. Kind of just makes sense to kind of make this paint that we're mixing here match the painting. So works great. Now let's start to go in here. Let's get some get some colors going here. Look at how good that looks. There we go. Okay, there we go. Then over here, you can always add a little bit of darks there and some blue maybe. Make a little darks there. There's a little bit of a dark shadow there. Let's make our dark shadows over here like so. Then over here, it's kind of light. 
sometimes you have to be very careful not to touch the paint you just put on. You can kind of see how I have that. I'm trying to keep that little bit of space between the two washes that I'm doing so that we can always blend it later. And then we'll get that clay pot color there. And we'll just keep working our clay pot color up here. And I'm using my uh, Simply Simmons number six round brush, which I find we can probably paint this whole painting with this. There we go. Not bad. Look at how good that looks. There we go. Okay, now let's get into our greens and just get in there and get the greens going. And I'm going to do that. And these greens are mixed with a little bit of brown to mellow them out a little bit. And you can kind of see, I'm just going to try to get these in quick. Again, I'm not going to get as detailed as these are. These have a lot of, you can actually do some detail work after we do the first wash. Then once it dries, you could add a little extra um, detail to these leaf forms. You know, you can add some of those lines in the leaf forms you can see there. But let's, for the first go, for the first wash, let's just get them in there like this. Just remembering to vary your colors a lot, right? We don't want that like one color wonder, you know. Let's make sure we mix lots of variations of colors. That always looks better. Can you see how I've done that? Because we mixed them all in here first and we said, let's do that. Let's mix our colors first on our palette, just like we did here. And you have all kinds of interesting greens and golds and cool stuff going on. So this way when you're going in here and doing that, you're going to automatically have beautiful variations in your green leaf forms so they don't look boring. If you were just to take one green, like one green and mix that and say, okay, I'm going to make these all that one green here that I'm using right here in this part of my palette, that would look awful. But if you add all your greens and mix some browns and golds and yellows and some orange even if you want, you add all those in here to your leaf forms and they're just going to look like, they're going to just look fantastic. So don't worry about it. Just listen to what Chris says and you're going to be good. And so I'm going to zip along here. Get lots of paint on my brush and just move along here and do a good job okay and then if you need a little more extra color add some orange into that like that over here get some of that viridian green over here maybe in the bottom leaf here and I'm just painting right in in line with my my pencil drawing so I'm just following my pencil drawing here so you can go quick when you're doing your brush work here you can really go fast because you're just following your pencil lines that you already did. All that hard work you did with paint uh, drawing, with your pencil drawings, now it pays off because now you don't have to worry about, oh, am I painting good or not? Or no, you're painting good because you took the time, you did a good drawing, a good solid drawing, and you can just use your drawing to flow your painting right, flow your paint right onto the watercolor paper, and it's going to look good because you already did the hard work of getting that beautiful um, drawing done so that you can just flow your paint right on the paper and you don't have to worry about is it looking good you know it looks good you did the basic method here of lots of color mixtures and you're just putting in those beautiful color mixtures you mixed ahead of time right into the spot you already drew. So you're basically, you're, you're really going to be looking beautiful here as you go. Don't let anyone tell you your paintings don't look good. I know they look good. You're all making great progress as you go. 
you're going to have people that critique your paintings and make you feel terrible and say you don't, you're not doing a good job, but don't listen to those people. Listen to me. I'm telling you, you're doing a great job. Every painting is a progress. And we're going along here doing a fun painting. There we go. And then you can add in some shadows underneath on the bottoms of the Okay, and then tie them together too. Make the leaves tie in and touch each other. So you, we wouldn't want to have this like each flower pot by itself. Have everything all weaved, weaved together. You're a weaver. You're a weaver and you're weaving your, your painting together like this. Weaving all the green leaves forms together and once we're completed with this, then we can do the flowers. Let's get this vase here. So we got orange, brown. We're mixing up the we're mixing up the uh, colors here for our flower pots. A little darker at the bottom. Okay, and I think the flower pots are darker up here underneath, so that should be darker under here. Okay. If that happens, you take a tissue and you just blot up like that. Now should we make some shadows? I say yes. Let's do a little bit of shadowing this way. Don't be afraid of the shadows. Let them flow like so. And again, we're using beautiful clay colors here. Have fun. Enjoy the process. Don't let it get to you. If it doesn't come out perfect, you can try another one. Always remember that. Let's do the shadow here. Okay. I'm going to do some splashing for the shadows too. Okay like that at the bottom here these might be the flowers over here so you can add a little bit of flower shapes maybe up here okay we're doing some powerful shadow shapes here this is going to be the back drop like this so that's going to be the table and we'll do some backdrop colors over here like here we could add some blue to that we could add some blue to the shadows 
as well. If you're going to add some blue over here, add some blue over here too. And I'm just going to add some more color over here and up here, just a little bit like that. Over here, too, I'm going to make a little bit of color along this table edge here. So this is like a table, white, maybe this is like a white tablecloth or a white table. And then our clay pots, pots are on top of the table. And then we have a little bit of the um, background there. We added a little bit of blue, purple, some more clay color, too. Kind of harmonize your colors. Try to make all your colors harmonize throughout the painting. Try not to make things look like, you know, green only in the green only in the um, leaf forms, right? Add some green into your shadows too, a little bit. Maybe a little bit of green in the in the flower pots too, like that. So try to mix all your colors around the whole painting. Already, that's looking really good. All right, so let me take another break, if you don't mind. And I always mention, if you like my videos, there's a subscribe button on the right-hand side below, especially if you're a beginner, uh, you know, an extreme beginner, you're just starting out for the first time. Maybe this is your first time ever watching my videos. Thank you so much for coming by. I welcome you. I really, it's a great honor that you come to my channel and paint along with me and paint along with all of us here. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of us painting together. So it's like we have this energy, all of us together, painting. So I'm, I'm really grateful you're coming by and you're going to join along. And if you want, if you hit the subscribe button on the right-hand side below, all that's going to do is just the next time you open up YouTube in like a week from now, you'll see that I've created a new painting and it'll, it'll be in your um, YouTube uh, queue. So when you open up YouTube, you'll see my video says, oh, Chris Petri made a new video. And that's because you subscribed. So basically, you won't lose me. You won't have to go and try to find me again. And that's all it is. There's nothing more to it. You won't get any emails from me or anything like that or, you know, phone calls or text messages. Nothing like that. It's just YouTube will let you know I have made a new video and they'll put it in your, your YouTube uh, homepage when you open up YouTube the next time. That's all it is. So feel free. Hit the subscribe button. There's the notification bells too as well. You can click uh, the top bell and the top bell will just make sure that you'll be notified each new video I make. You'll see that in your YouTube page when you open up YouTube the next time. And I'm glad you're here having fun with us. So let's get started on the next section. Once we take a quick break, we're going to let this dry a little bit and then we'll do our flowers and that's it. We're pretty much done. So let's finish this painting up. If it comes out good, please put a mat on it, put a frame around it and put it up on the wall or give it as a gift. Do something with your paintings. You're doing some beautiful paintings out there. I know many of you, most of you are doing some really great paintings. Don't uh, just set them aside and put them in a folder or throw them in a drawer or something or in a box. Definitely, when your paintings come out good, the good ones that really you find are really looking fantastic, absolutely find a frame for them. Find a mat and a frame at your local shop, you know, your local big box stores or maybe online you can order one on Amazon for 2 or $3. You can get a frame put it in a frame, hang it up, or just pin it up on your wall. If you don't want to bother with a frame, pin it up on a wall and, and have that and look at it and say, wow, I've accomplished a great painting or two. Put them up and keep doing that. Keep the best paintings that you do, save them, pin them up on the wall, frame them, get excited, and uh, you're just going to be doing better and better artwork as you go. So as long as you're following along with me every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year, your paintings are always going to improve, guaranteed. And I have many people that are sending in their paintings to me on email. And I'm looking at them and I'm saying, I don't even know if it's my painting or their painting. That's how good people are getting with their watercolors. They're really succeeding and doing a great job with their watercolors. And I think it's just because I cover the fundamentals, the basics of watercolor. And when I do that, people just follow along every week, week after week, month after month, and even year after year. And their paintings are looking absolutely fantastic. So I'm hoping you're going to do the same. It's just a matter of keep working each week with us here. Practicing as much as you can. Try practicing drawing 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes every day. And you will absolutely 
progress and do a beautiful job okay so i'm going to take a break and we'll finish up these flowers and uh, that'll be it for this painting and then we'll be on to the next one okay all right we'll see you in just a second all right we're back and we're going to finish up our painting here and as we were just saying we um we wanted to mix all of our colors harmoniously throughout our painting so i i used that clay color here for the clay pots but i also added in some green to the clay pots and i did some shadowing and when i did my shadows i used that purple color that we mixed here which was the purple with a little bit of brown mixed in there for our shadow color i used the shadow colors here but when i did my shadows i added in some of that clay pot color and some of the green colors and again, that's to, to harmonize all the colors in your painting together, if you can. Um, maybe you try it without harmonizing your colors, and then you try harmonizing your colors and try mixing all your colors throughout your whole painting and see how you like the two different styles. But I guarantee you, you're going to see that you really enjoy using the uh, technique of mixing and harmonizing your colors. So. We're going to do the flowers now. These are red. So I'm just going to do some really loose fun. Fun, fun uh, flower shapes here. Can you see how I'm doing just some fun strokes here? I'm not going to sit here and suffer over my um, petals of my flower and the colors and everything. No, I'm just going right around with some nice round shape forms round like round curvy forms and then there's a little bit of blue and purplish colors in the center of the flowers so I can add a little little couple dots you know I just I just go in there and dot like that that looks better and sitting here and suffering and saying, oh my gosh, I have to make perfect little dots. Don't worry. Touch a couple of your brush strokes right in the center of each one. Just like that. Good. Perfect. Let's do the next. Over here, this looks like a little bit lighter red. Not as much. So I'll make this a little lighter. I'll make a little bit of water mix in there like that like that and then the same thing just some round shapes fun round shapes right just like this have fun with it don't get take things too seriously with watercolors have fun with it Okay, so those are a little more purpley, not as red as these. These are more red, these flowers. So we're just trying to stick with what we're seeing over here. And I also would like to do a couple splashes like that. And then the same thing over here with these red ones. Let me add a couple red splashes like that. A couple of splashes down here on the table. If you do some splashes up on the top of the painting, just a couple if you like. If you don't like splashes, don't do them. But if you do a couple splashes up here, you'd want to add a few down below too, on the bottom of the painting, just like we're doing. And then we're going to have some more bluish. There we go. Look at that. Oh, perfect. We got a little. We got our the center of our flowers here, looking good. Then we'll slide this on over, like over here. And we'll do these. These are more bluish purple. So let's go with blue. Like that. Yeah, let's do that. Blue, maybe a little bit of purple. Add a little bit of that red in there just to gray it down a little bit. Not too high intensity. And then let's just get these in here. I'm just doing those curvy lines, like so. And I think that looks good. There we go. And 
And this one here is in profile, so it's all purplish. Okay. And again, you're having fun. That's the whole thing with watercolor is your watercolor should be your fun, free, happy thing you're going to do in life. You know, you're going to go to your job and have stress. You're going to go sometimes to visit with your family and you'll have stress when you do that. You know, there might be arguments or this or that, or, or you may be in your family members, you might have arguments or whatever, you know, but your watercolors, this is your fun time. You're just going to be in your own little happy world, creating your paintings, forgetting about the whole other part of life where there's other stresses and things or work or your house or your home or bills you have to pay or whatever else. Let those things just subside. Don't worry about those things. Just get into your artwork and have a good time with that. Before you know it, you've been concentrating on your artwork for hours and you've forgotten all about all the other stresses and things in life. And then you'll have gotten a lot, little bit of peace and happiness, you know, and then you'll have to go back and deal with the other things. But that's okay because you know you're going to eventually get back to doing your watercolors again or you're going to have peace and fun and happiness and nothing can touch you you'll have fun and it'll be a good thing that's how I how my artwork is when I do my artwork I'm having a great time no stress everything else I forget about and before you know it, hours have gone by and I've had a great time and especially sharing my time with everyone here with all of you we're having a great time and I know I'm out thinking about all of you out there and saying wow everyone else is like me there you guys are all having a great time doing your watercolors along with me and uh, I'm thinking of you too and uh, so okay that's why I always say happy painting you'll be happy when you're painting okay and there we have it we've completed the whole painting we've had a fun time we didn't stress we made a mess and didn't stress couple dabs of paint here and there just a little bit a little bit of artistic scrubs of the brush onto the paper and you are looking good so out there all of you are painting especially your extreme beginners this is the time you're having your most fun you're just getting in your paintings having a good time painting doesn't come out good you try another one and you just keep doing it that way you just keep one after the next keep painting and you're going to find that you're going to have your good paintings some of them aren't going to look so great no worries keep working on them and uh, we'll see you soon on the next video but i hope you enjoyed this video especially and again i always mention please subscribe it's on the right hand side below the subscribe button you hit subscribe this way at least you don't lose me You'll have my videos coming into your homepage on YouTube. So the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see our new videos that we're coming out with. And I always usually make two or three videos every week. So you'll get to see all my new videos and you paint along with the ones you like. And if you don't maybe think you want to paint along with a certain vid, um, painting that I'm doing on YouTube, at least watch the video. You'll probably learn new things. You'll learn the terminology that we use all the time, the uh, vernacular, so to speak, of our watercolor tutorials I'm always mentioning the same terminology the same uh, techniques and methods that we use all the time in watercolor I'm mentioning all the colors we're using so you learn all these things and those are all valuable things you want to learn you want to try to get as much things committed to memory with watercolor as you can because that leaves you more time to concentrate on the actual painting itself and that's really one of the hidden gems of watercolor if, you, if most things you can get committed to memory with watercolor, like your colors, um, techniques, methods, little tips and tidbits of things that you learn along the way, if you can get those all committed to memory so that they're just things you don't even have to think about, then you'll be able to concentrate more on mixing colors, let's say, or more on how your painting is looking overall as you're creating it. So, again, these are all little things, you know, tidbits of information that I give here on my channel, but I think you'll really benefit by just um coming back week after week month after month and year after year on my channel and again it's just hitting the subscribe button so this way you can join along and we'll see you on the next video okay everyone talk to you soon thanks again happy painting and enjoy the journey talk to you soon bye bye